Welcome back to our channel, guys. Today, we're checking out a beautiful 220 gallon tank. It's from one of our customers. Her name is Patricia. Matt, as you guys seen him before, our technician, he's been maintaining this tank for almost two years and it's looking beautiful. I briefly went inside, I checked them out and I was like, wow. So I'm gonna share this with you guys. So let's go inside and let's check it out. All right, guys, we made it inside. We're here with Matt. Matt, what's up, buddy? Good to see you again, man. So this is our third video thing we've done with Matt. He maintained uh, multiple tanks for our customers. We've been with us now, how long, Matt? About four or five years. I think at least five years. Five years. It's been quite a while already. Yeah. So anyhow, let's get right to the point. What a beautiful tank do we have here, buddy. You were telling me this is a 220 gallon tank? Yeah, 220 gallon water box. Oh my gosh, you're killing it, man. I just. Before I even jump into it, I've never seen a Lobophilia this happy, and you were telling me it was only one head? It was like one head, and it was basically dead, and just a lot of TLC feeding it. And what do you feed here. that thing, steroids? <laughs> Chunks of shrimp, actually. Seriously? Seriously. Oh my gosh, it's gotta be the happiest Lobophilia I've ever seen, you know? Guys, I can't forget, throughout this video, we're gonna hide an Easter egg of Casper somewhere. Some of you guys are super fast. Don't ask me how you guys do it. First two people to post comment below, where you see it at, we're gonna send you guys a swag pack right to your door, as long as you're within the United States, all 48 states. So how big is this tank? This is 220 gallons, uh, I think six foot long. Okay. It's the stock water box, 220 gallon reef tank. And how long has this tank been set up for? The tank's been set up for almost three years now. Did we set it up? Uh, we set it up, we took down their old tank and kind of just redid, redid their tank for them. Okay, got you. And what kind of lights are you using? Aqua illumination uh, design? These are AIs. Uh, Hydro 52s. Hydro 52s. Yes. Yes. And then there's a different one here. One yeah, this is just ones? the newer model, the new gen. Okay. So but these are the old ones from her old tank, and she needed a fourth light for this tank. Okay. How do you like them? I do like them. They're growing. The corals really good, and the colors are looking phenomenal. And how many hours a day are you running the lights from this tank? The tank from about 8:30 in the morning till almost nine at night. But so about 12, 13 hours a day. 12, 13 hours, and full spectrum, maybe about five or six hours. Full spectrum five or six hours. Yep. Okay, and that's in the, the middle of the day or towards the morning? Uh, towards the morning. Towards the morning? Yep. And then the rest of the day nice it's and blue? Nice and blue. We're doing water change about every other week, about 25% on this tank. Um, sometimes we'll push the water change a little longer, only because she doesn't have an extreme amount of fish, so we can kind of monitor the nitrates and see where they're, see where they're at. Okay, and the customer, what salt do they choose to use when do you, do you do water changes? We're using Instant Ocean, Instant uh, Ocean? Crystals. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, we are broadcast feeding uh, reef roids. Okay. And then same as our last tank we talked about, the Red Sea uh, Reef Energy AV+. Plus. So basically the way you were doing in the tank that we filmed last week. Yep, exactly. Just Excellent. maybe a little bit more mm -hmm. reef roids and a little bit more Fido and some stuff like that. Okay. Two MP40s on this tank only. Um, we were gonna add more, but why mess with how the corals are was working? So basically, it's the safe to assume that you're using Brightwell A, B, and C? We're and not using magnesium, only because for some reason the tank's not absorbing as much magnesium. Okay. So with the water changes, it's just replenishing that. We're using Reef Nutrition Beta Brine, okay. uh, ROE, which okay. is fish eggs. I like the arthropods because uh, they add like a special color into it for the wrasses and the antheus and everything like that. So yeah, um, and she has some beautiful wrasses in here. So so since you already dove right into the fish, yeah, talk to me about the fish. Yeah, I see you have a beautiful Bellas Angel. Yeah, Bellas Angel Solarensis wrasse. She's got a, a algae blending here, lawnmower mm -hmm. blending. We had a little bit of a breakout of of some algae in the beginning, and we yeah. just added him, and he took care of it all, no problem. And they're so friendly. I love the way they look and just. That's, that to me is a fish because when you, you you sit there and you start watching them just swim and just do their own thing. That's where they the, have a lot of the pa yeah, that's yeah. where the passion for the hobby comes. It's not just to say, oh look how beautiful my tank looks. It's about just sitting there and just watching the fish do their thing and just I seen people literally pet their fish. Yeah. I mean literally they come out, they feed him and they're they're that's petting him, they're calling him names and and all kinds of things. So, Matt, now and officially I can say I've seen three or four of Matt's tank in the past six months or so. And these are his best tanks and they look beautiful. Tell our audience, what does it take to achieve a tank like this? Like, how do you keep it so simple? Yeah. What works for you? Obviously, you're able to replicate this on multiple tanks at your customer's yeah. house. You make it look easy because you come once a week, 
and you were telling me she's into the hobby, if there's any issues, she calls you and you guys work it together. So you're available to coach her through any issues that you guys may have. Right. That's what you normally do with your customers? Uh, most of them, yes. Um, the ones that are really we observant, that's how we do it. I'm, all my customers have my phone number, so if there's an emergency in the middle of the weekend or whatever, they can always shoot me a text or a phone call and we'll walk, walk through it. If we have to move a coral, say something falls in the sand, whatever it may be, we just go ahead and do That's that. very nice of you. It shows that you're passionate about the hobby and you care about the craft, you know? Right. So when we start the tank, I'm really patient when adding corals. Um, okay. Start with super basic, easy stuff like Zoas and Acans and Blastos. Stuff that is pretty much bulletproof. Uh, I'd like to see at least nitrates above 10. Um, okay. So that that's probably about a two months or so, um, just okay. running fish and inverts. Um, and then once you see those numbers start to jump up where there is nutrients in the tank, okay. because the corals do need nutrients. They can't yeah. survive on, you know. When the water's nothing. too clean, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we'll go, go there and pick a light schedule and stick with it. Don't change it because when you change it, I see a big, you know, the corals do so not stability. like that. Stability. Yeah. Stability. Okay, if so you, let the corals get used to whatever light you give them. Right. Uh, water testing is one of my biggest things. And when you mean water testing, to give me a little, yep. walk us through what is a water testing look like in a regular week, on a regular month, or on a regular basis. Yep, so uh, I, the two most important that I feel, uh, alkalinity and phosphate. Those two, I feel, will kill the corals the fastest. Okay. Um, obviously salinity and you know temperature and everything like that has to be right, but phosphate and alkalinity will kill your corals faster than anything else. I always like to pick corals that I can cut really, like that I don't need a bandsaw and stuff like that because I am at a customer's house. I can't bring a bandsaw into their house and start fragging up stuff. So I like to pick corals that I can cut with just frag cutters too. That's like gotcha. a huge thing for me is because I need to keep everything trimmed. I love this Micromusa right here. Oh my gosh. That coral, she picked it out over at Winter Park. Nice. And uh, she really loved it, so we wanted that thing to really grow. And then you got some Grandmaster Krakatoas growing here, like weeds. Most people oh, yeah. have a tough time with them growing. That's fantastic, they're growing beautiful. You got an orange hammer. I see the Lobos, meat corals, more Blastos right there. Yeah. What I'm starting to realize is the most beautiful reef tanks are the mixed reef. If you guys remember, uh, if I remember correctly, when we went to California about a month ago, if you guys go back to the video from Mike, it's one of the most beautiful mixed reefs I have ever seen. And this one is not too far from it, just needs a little extra growth. But seriously, when you do a mixed reef, everything comes together. It's not about how expensive the corals is. If you guys see right here, we got star polyps, we got some rhodactis mushrooms, we got some regular zoanthids, we got some pipe organ, we got some more scramble eggs zoanthids growing over there on the overflow. It's not about how rare the corals are, it's how beautiful you can put everything together. But anyhow, you do a great job with that. Fantastic, phenomenal job. Let's dive right into the filtration now. Yes, then. very plain Jane uh, sump, you know, standard okay. water box. Okay. Uh, Regal 250. Okay, do you run it 24-7? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, pretty low skim. Okay, and for return pump, what are you using? That's a Reef Octopus. Okay, uh, Reef Octopus. Vario 6, I believe. I see uh, you got an Ecotech Marine battery backup right here. I got two of them. Two of them? them in here, just in case, you know, she goes on vacation into that's Europe and stuff like that. That's uh, battery backup for both the MP40s. Do you run CO2 scrubber on most of your tanks? Uh, I'd say like 60% of them. CO2 scrubber basically is soda lime. Um, so we're pulling the air through the soda lime and the soda lime's um, taking out the carbon out of it. So it's introducing pure oxygen basically into the skimmer which is adding pure oxygen into the So it allows in and then automatically raises the pH, which correct? Which would raise the pH, yep. Mm -hmm. More oxygen would raise the pH. So very funny. I was talking to Greg Carroll, you guys might know the voice of Rifa Palooza, the other day, and I said, how's the tank doing? Oh, it's not doing too good. I said, how come? He goes, ah, oh, something with my pH. And I said, what do you mean with your pH? He goes, it got too hot in the summer. I said, yep. what is getting too hot? He goes, yeah, we close all the windows. pH drops. Keep tone because normally in Southern California, basically most of the year, they're able to keep the windows open, but this summer got so hot that they have to close the windows and turn on the AC. And I don't think like that, because here in Florida, we keep the windows closed basically- All year. Yeah. 75% of the year. More, more 90, 95% yeah. of the year, we keep our windows closed. So we know we adapt to the aquarium always being the same, so we don't have to make those changes. So there you go. If you ever have issues with pH, 
There's a couple solutions. Me, I like to drop, I like to drip cold washers 24-7, yep. or you can drip it at night because that's when your pH drops. Yeah. So then you can balance that by dropping cold washer at night, or like Matt says, at a, a CO2, CO2 scrubber. scrubber. So it will raise your pH and then yeah. you won't have that issue. Well, man, that covers everything, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me over, yes, man. Sir. You're doing a great job. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Give us a like. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Post some comments below. We'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to get your tickets. Reef of Palooza in Texas is coming October 7th and 8th. Ryan from Bulk Reef Supply and myself will be speaking at 1230 both Saturday and Sunday. Make sure you come check it out. It's my first time ever. I'm kind of nervous and kind of excited about it at the same time. So get your tickets, get your hotel rooms, and see you there.